Hi everyone, so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be creating a new Flutter project. So what I did is I just opened up a terminal just by going here, um, searching for it at the top, that icon, and then terminal, opening that up, and then I'll make this bigger. And I'll just say CD desktop to go to my desktop, and I will say Flutter create and then new underscore project has to be all lowercase and I just put underscore between each word and that'll take a few seconds and now we have our folder here ready to go with our project set up. Now what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be opening up Android Studio and in Android Studio here I could click on open if you when you haven't opened it up yet, you'll have to click on open and I go desktop, new project, and I'll click open once I have that main folder selected. And we could see here that we got our initial project set up. It all automatically comes with the test folder and then this Java folder with the Dart files. So we're ready to go with our project. And if I click on the main.dart, you can see here it contains our initial code and I don't really like how it's set up initially with so many classes in one file. Um, we'll see how we could separate the classes a little bit later but for now I'm just going to show you how to run it after we've got our project set up here. So here at the top right you'll see no devices selected. Um, there's nothing initially but what we could do is we could go here on the right side we could click on this running devices icon. It looks like a mobile device uh, with a little computer or something. Um, let me see, device manager, we could select whatever device we want as well. So let's say I want, so if I click on device manager, I get this pop-up and I'm going to actually select this Pixel 6 API. Um, if you don't initially have it, actually we could click on this plus icon and then create virtual device. And what I'll do is I'll just create a new one so we could see how it looks. So let's say I want a Pixel 8. Next. Um, this one doesn't really matter too much. I'll just click on uh, whatever I've done here. I'll say this upside down cake. Upside down cake. Once it's done here, we could click finish. And next, I'm not going to change anything here. This is fine. Finish. And now we could see in our device manager on the right side, we will see the Pixel 8. And we can just click on this start button, the play button. And this area here, the no device selected, it should automatically change to Pixel 8, but we'll see what happens when it loads. So now that we have this phone all ready to go, um, we could see that we got our code here, our starter code. So we're just going to click on this green button here, and we could see that this Pixel 8 has now shown up instead of no devices and we can select based on the device that's um, loaded and we have always make sure for now that the main.dart is selected for what starts the application because the run app is what starts the application in the main and we're going to click on this play button to run the application now so what's going to do it's going to build that main.dart file on the Pixel 8 phone and initially it may take a few minutes, it may take longer for everyone initially because it's just trying to make the initial build for this new project and also make sure it installs like this little virtual application um, to get it going on this virtual device. So we see here down in the terminal here um, the main.dart is trying to run on the Pixel 8 and it's trying to run that main.dart file and it's just trying to do the build right now so it's going to take a few minutes. So we could see here now um, it has 
finished the build and did its installations and now we could see here on our pixel 8 on the right side that it has set up this initial project we have run the my app so it calls this class the stateless widget we'll talk more about it later but it's essentially just setting up the application and what's going to happen is it's going to call that first class which is going to be that home page it's going to pass over a title which is flutter demo home page and it's passing it over to the my home page class which is down below and again i don't really like it that all the classes are on one dart file i'll show you how to split it up later but what we're trying to do is we're just setting up the home page and then we're going to create some sort of state for it so it will whenever we're dealing with a state full widget we have to set up this create state which will call another class and it's going to be always denoted as underscore my home page whatever it's called and then state at the end of it and it extends whatever that previous class is my home page and we're just setting up some sort of initial counter it looks like um, this underscore here is just going to be private which means it only will work in this class and this function here increment only will work in this class that's how we have the underscore so whenever we click it it should increment the counter and in this build you'll see here an app bar an app bar is this purple part right there and it's what sets up that um, header at the top and we got some sort of title which is what we passed over from the initial class and it's just going to set the title of flutter demo home page and then in the body this white area we are going to have a text um, you have pushed the button so many times and then this number will show up here in the text area the counter so this dollar underscore counter it's just going to show, well, it's just going to be calling this counter, which is up here, the counter. And we're just going to show it on the screen right now, it's zero. But whenever they click on it, you'll see that there's this floating button, which is down below. And whenever they press it, it will call this increment counter, underscore increment counter, that private function. The private function is what adds to that counter one at a time each time it's clicked the set state we'll talk more about it as well this is what actually allows for that change using the set state and you'll see that the tooltip is increment what I mean by that is when I click on this hold it you'll see this pop-up it says increment and every time I click on this plus you'll see the number go up and that's why we have this child it's I'm going to set this icon, which is the add, which is that plus sign. And whenever we click it, it calls that function or method called underscore increment counter. So this is the initial setup process of using when using Android Studio.